See, the enemy knows that there is different dimensions of power circuits in God's provisional ability. And the whole goal is to not let man know that. So there's, there's emotional um, entry points for demons such as fear, worry, anxiety, stress that takes away the power of God concerning wealth and abundance and having all things taken care of by God. Second Corinthians chapter 9 gave a powerful reference about the grace of God. It said God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. All of God's grace isn't being seen in your life currently. And once you recognize that, it should excite you. Because I haven't seen all of God's grace yet. When all of God's grace start abounding towards you, your conditions become clothed with abundance and riches and wealth. All of his grace makes your life look just like his. And saints, you got to really take the time to think about it. The Lord is not in poverty or sickness and he's not in lack of deficiency of any kind. So when your life starts looking like the Lord, all those things that you see physically start to die out. All those things that you experience in your finances start to die out. All those things you experience in your health start to die out. Now, when we look at cherubims, cherubims are a league of angels that are responsible to be nurturers of the blessing, to protect the blessing. A cherubim, they have power from God to be alongside of you as he blesses you so that you don't have no sorrow with the blessing. Cherubims stop the sorrow agenda of the enemy when God is blessing you. So, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, there are, there are cherubims around him that are blocking out sorrow. So the garden is exciting. The garden is fun. The garden is a blessing. But the garden is being surrounded by cherubims. So cherubims are in that garden making sure that Adam does not get touched by sorrow. Cherubims increase in a person's life when they become a kingdom operator. The kingdom is about sowing and reaping, giving and receiving. Something leaving you and something coming back to you in return that's bigger than what left you. That's what the kingdom is all about. Faith has several elements. There's a faith that is psychological. It's mental. It's the mind of Christ. That's why Galatians 2.20 said, the life that I now live in the flesh is by the faith of the Son of God. The psychological mindset of Apostle Paul was given by Christ through faith. So faith has different elements. The mental faith. And then we have emotional faith. Faith, when it enters your emotions, it causes excitement. It causes the joy of salvation. What is the joy of salvation? Being happy about deliverance. Understanding liberty. Recognizing emancipation, liberation. Recognizing freedom. Recognizing good reports on the way. 
When faith is emotional, is in the emotional aspect, joy. When faith is in the bodily aspect, works. That's what Apostle James was saying. Faith without works is what? Is dead. Faith without works is dead. Now we're dealing with the physical, the bodily aspect of faith. And then what the Bible said, you walk by faith. That's walking. That's exercising. You exercise. Now, something happens when you keep on walking, your heartbeat changes. When you keep walking by faith, your heartbeat changes from wickedness to worship. Weakness to wisdom, perversion to power and purity, patience, distraction to diligence, distinction, deliverance. Your heartbeat changes when you're walking by faith. The same way when, when someone is walking continually on a treadmill. I was running on the treadmill and something about the treadmill is this. I, I got something on the treadmill that uh, I could create the, the running that I'm doing. Um, I could create it into a mountain. So I could cause the floor to go upwards. Why would the floor need to go upwards while I'm running? Because it's something called resistance. And the Bible says resist the devil and he, she shall flee from thee. <laughs> and so the, the, the resistance is so important because the more you resist, the more your heartbeat changes, the more you sweat, the more you have to exert energy. So the, the, the resistance in running means that now I'm building more muscle, I'm building more effort, I'm building more energy, I'm building more results because something is opposing me as I run. So you got to understand this. When you don't see no resistance in your running, while you're running in the spirit, you should always get nervous because that means that there's no strengthening of anointing on you. There's no strengthening of abundance around you. There's no strengthening of wisdom within you. Nothing is being strengthened if you never encounter any resistance. So when bad news come, when somebody rises up against you, when things the way you saw it begins to crumble, you should awkwardly rekindle your joy. You notice why I said awkwardly. Because it's an awkward thing because the mind is saying, no, the natural reaction is get worried. The natural reaction is get fearful. But you should awkwardly rekindle your joy. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. My finances will never run dry. My finances will never be lost. No financial blessing schedule for my life will be stolen. No financial increase scheduled for my life will be delayed. No financial miracle that I'm supposed to walk in will be postponed. I receive all angelic ministry concerning my finances. I send you ministering spirits to go forth and minister for me and cause money, wealth, riches to come to me. I receive the plan of God for my life and finances. I will live in abundance all the days of my life. I have life and life more abundantly. My well of wealth and provision will never grow dry. It'll never run scarce. It'll never enter into a famine. Famine and destruction will not touch me. Ha, ha, ha. I laugh at famine and I laugh at destruction. You know, Abraham, he became a territorial 
um, wealth general. Because Abraham was in different territories and he opened up wells in each territory he went. Remember in the life of Isaac? Remember Isaac had found that the Philistines started to stop up the wells because they was enemies of God. But think about it. Abraham had opened up wells in different parts of the land that he was traveling on. So Abraham was a territorial wealth engineer, entrepreneur. He was a um, he was a territorial wealth general. He had authority over money wherever he went because he had obeyed God financially. Financial obedience gives you wisdom on what to say to the atmosphere. I want to say this slowly. When you obey God financially, you receive wisdom of what to say to the atmosphere. Well, prophet, how do I know what to say to my atmosphere? There is financial tongues there are tongues that when you interpret those tongues, they are dealing with your next financial decision. They're dealing with your next financial thoughts, your next financial ideas, your, your next financial work assignment. That's why you should never get worried. If somebody called you today and said, we're letting you go from the job, there is a door that you're about to discover. There are financial tongues. When you're speaking those tongues, they're dealing with financial agendas, financial understanding. God talking to you about finances. He telling you about finances. That when you pray in those tongues, the financial fire of God sits on your life. That means it burns up poverty. It burns up uh, scams, 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 scams and scammers. Because so many people in this day and time are giving heed to people that's lying to them. They, they, you're giving over your information. You're giving over your social security number. You're giving over money. Somebody writing you talking about somebody died in the family. We got 10 million for you, but send us about a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, and then we'll release the 10 million to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Your email is not a place for financial increase. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Are you hearing me? Your email is not a place for financial increase. Oh, baby, I just got it. I just got financial increase in the email. They gave me an email. Nah, baby, the email is not no confirmation of no financial increase. Email is the travel route of scammers. If you want to give me some money and you don't know my address, you don't know my phone number, then hey, email is not the place for financial increase. The Lord raises you up to be a financial territorial general in your city, in your state. There are demons in each and everybody's city that has a plan to keep you broke financially. They want you to be shamed in your provision. They want you to lose money opportunities. They want you to be lazy. They want you to be naive. They want your time to be intercepted by idol, idolatry and idol acts. They don't want you to achieve the financial plan of God. So you have to be real intentional about working your financial covenant in the spirit. Financial tongues is where you're praying in the spirit and God has a theme in those tongues. He's giving you financial codes. Somebody, if you take a note, write this down. Wealth codes, wealth codes. He's showing you how to walk in the power to get wealth. All of your tongues is not dealing with disconnect from somebody or prepare for a car accident or get out that wrong relationship or stop watching this. 
Some of your tongue interpretation is dealing with your wealth, your abundance. There's a wealth transference that you're supposed to receive at a certain time, in a certain month, at a certain place, from a certain person, in a certain activity. And some of your tongues, and so if you don't pray in tongues, you're not going to have the financial mysteries of your life decoded. You're not going to understand what the financial mystery is saying. The financial mysteries, it will tell you, it'll guide you into meeting somebody. It'll guide you into saying certain things, applying yourself somewhere, offering your services somewhere. So financial tongues. And then we got something else called financial meditation. The reason why God kept taking Abraham and showing him the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky he was showing him wealth. He was showing him his abundance power. As much as this, as much as the sand on the seashore, as much as the stars in the sky, he was giving him financial meditation so many different times in his training. Jehovah God was training Abraham in financial meditation because you got to meditate the word strong enough to understand who you working with and who you sowing into, that God Almighty don't got no deficiency in delivering abundance to you. You got to know that. So there is a financial abundance, meditational system in the Holy Ghost. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That the Holy Ghost will use your brain to picture all the stuff that he's about to do for you. And he don't give you the full spectrum. He give you bits and pieces because the full story of your life financially has yet to be revealed. This a movie of money. No, we got different movies. We got movies for your for, for, for your health. We got movies for your pleasure. We got movies for, for your restoration of, uh, 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 of soul. We got movies for your protection. But there's a movie of money. And when God take you to the cinema of your wealth and take you to the cinemax of your increase and he start taking you into the economical glory chamber, where he going to multiply your seed zones. He going to bring people that are distributors of help and assistance to your pathway. Money cometh to me now because I'm having a, a increase of impartation from the God of all grace right now. And all of his grace is coming towards me because I'm sowing, because I'm choosing to sow. I'm choosing to praise. I'm choosing to give him thanks. Lastly, I want to say this. The level of wealth you have is not just determined by your seed. And it's not just determined by your work. Because there's always going to be work that God going to call you to do. Work is anything that God is using your body to fulfill. And it includes other people. Other people are benefiting off of you. That's how you become wealthy. You got to become a sacrifice for others. Remember, Jesus laid down his life for everybody. Joseph, he sacrificed and then he, he, he was the one, he sacrificed himself for others. They came out of their famine because of his wisdom. Daniel, sacrificing for others, interpreting dreams. Everybody sacrificing. Ezekiel, sacrificing for others. Jeremiah, sacrificing for others. Abraham, sacrificing for others. He went, walked that walk of faith for you so that you can have the blessing of Abraham on your life. God looks at your reaction to the level of blessing that he's currently giving you to see if you're ready for the blessing that you really desire. The Lord looks at, and watch the replay to hear what I just said. I ain't repeating myself. The Lord looks at your responses to the raindrop before he pour out the flood. So just think about it. God on purpose never gives you all of your finances at one time. He studies to see how humble, how meek, how teachable, how flexible, how willing, how obedient you are with the finances he entrusts to you. 
and he looks at your level of maturity, your level of hunger. He don't give you all at once. So remember, your finances is never all at once. He give you here a little, there a little. And he studies you to see what you're going to do with it. If you handle finances like you entitled and you some glamour girl, some glamour boy, and you a diva, if you a financial diva, you ain't going to make it far and well. One of the problems is, is that when somebody breaks open into wealth, when people meet that person, they just immerse themselves in that wealth like they went through the same path and it don't be the same path. People that get to their wealthy place done die to themselves. They done broke away from false family members. They done broke away from false marriages. They done broke away from false children. They done broke away from false careers. They done broke away from false pleasures. They done broke away from false dreams and imaginations. And when you see them, you ain't break away from nothing. You want to hop in and just enjoy yourself. I'm going to tell you right now. If God can't break you, he not going to break off no wealth to you. God going to have to break you and take you into a way where you not the one winning the argument. He winning the argument. You not the one winning the decisions. He winning the decisions. That means that he having his way. And that's when you're going to come into increase. When he could take you through your breaking and see you become the person he wants you to be. If you're not willing to do it, hey, you might as well twinkle your fingers, twitty tweet, twitty tweet. Because you're going to dream like millions upon millions of believers that have entered this earth realm way before you. And they all had dreams of God doing something big and never happened. Because God ain't going to make that happen for you until he could break you and be your Lord. He got Abram away from his family. He got Abram away from the natural. He got Abram away from his feelings. He got Abel, Abram away from his uh, common sense. And that's when he makes him very rich. The blessing of Abraham, the secret of it is that, yes, it's wealth. Yes, it's unlimited provision. But God going to target you and look at how much you going to let him dominate you. And if you're not willing to let him dominate you, baby, you, you're going to be delusional like every other believer. They say they believe that Jesus rose again, died, rose again. La, 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 fa, la, 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 la. It's going to be a season to be jolly. Fa, la, 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 la. And you're never going to receive the jolly. You're never going to receive the joy because you ain't been broken yet. Saints, that's the dangerous thing when um, people are not broken. They can look at your life in wealth and think, okay, this is my life. No, it's not your life. Until you're broken, you may very well be tested and won't even make it to the life that you see. You could be right by the life and never enter into it because until you're broken, you do not qualify for nothing. How we step into our wealthy place is because the father could break us. The father could do what he wants. He could tell us, leave that relationship. He could tell us, leave those children, leave that house, leave those sisters, leave those brothers, leave that, leave this, leave this. And that's how we step into our wealthy place.